Influenza infection. It might start with a sneeze, but the underlying infection can cause far worse. Hundreds of thousands of people every year die from severe influenza virus infection. Everything begins when the virus enters our airways. Here, influenza viruses specifically attach to the surface of the epithelial cells. The viral membrane envelope contains the neurometadase protein Na, important for the efficient release of newly produced viruses. Today I want to give you a little background on how viruses work, especially in relationship to what's happening currently in 2009. One of the first things we need to truly understand about a virus, in this particular case, is that it is a parasite. So what I've diagrammed here is kind of a cycle of a parasite to give you an idea of what's important. Essentially, a parasite cannot live on its own, so it's got to have a host. Uh, once in that host, it will then replicate itself and make more copies of itself, but ultimately what's important is its ability to then get out and spread to other species, and that's called lysis. So this idea that the parasite needs to get in the host, and in the case of influenza, that's actually in the cells of the respiratory system, it needs to do what we call infection. Once it's within the host cells, it will then use the host materials or cellular machinery to make more copies of itself. Once that is performed, then it will break open the cells, spread throughout the respiratory fluid, uh, and then spread to other organisms or species by something as simple as coughing. So that's the initial idea of what a virus is and what's important to kind of understand how this influenza is going to work. Another important concept uh, to help you understand how these viruses work is the idea of the central dogma of biology. Essentially the central dogma is the idea that DNA or what we call a nucleic acid or deoxyribonucleic acid is used as a template for the production of an intermediate that we call RNA or ribonucleic acid and ultimately that is then utilized to as a template to create proteins. What's interesting about proteins is they tend to be or are three-dimensional in shape and their shape will help determine their function. Uh, we will see how this comes into play when we talk about the different proteins that are involved in influenza A. So essentially what's important about the central dogma is the idea that basically changes in the RNA can ultimately lead to changes in the protein. And those changes in the protein have the ability to change the shape of the protein, thereby possibly changing the actual function of the protein. Okay, so the particular type of influenza you're currently hearing about in the news is influenza A. The reality in nature, there tends to be two types or three types of influenza. Influenza A, B, and C. All three types of these are found in humans. Influenza A is primarily found in the avian population, but has the ability to go to a few other different species, humans being one of them. What's kind of unique about influenza A is it seems to be, in humans, uh, it has the ability to attack the respiratory system. So we call it a respiratory virus. And also, it's an RNA-based virus. So if you... Here is an example of neuroaminidase, a crystal structure of influenza A neuroaminidase N3. First and foremost, where can we get the information? Well, information on neuroaminidase can be found under the Protein Data Bank website. There are hundreds of neuroaminidase that can be found in this website. As shown here is one example. Key in the selected neuroaminidase in the search box. To obtain the protein sequence, click on the faster sequence and open up the downloaded file. To get the nucleotide sequence, copy only the protein sequence and paste it on the Sequence Manipulation Suite Reverse Translate website. Click Submit. Here is the results obtained. Now, the secondary and tertiary sequence can be found from the Neuroaminidase page in the Protein Data Bank website we had searched earlier. This neuroaminidase selected here is part of a study done from a journal written by the following. So how about it? Give it a try yourself. 